Elasticity is one of those concepts and principles of economics that drive students crazy. They just don't understand the, the idea of percentage changes and the importance of percentage changes. Uh, elasticity is a concept in intermediate that's really, really important. It's important, it's important in, in principles as well, but it's really important in, in understanding what's going on in intermediate theory and also when we apply it to econometric analysis and other kinds of uh, analyses that we that we use when we look at sort of advanced micro uh, theory. Elasticity is simply the change in one variable divided by the change in another variable. Usually we look at the elasticity of demand, which says what's the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. And we oftentimes leave it at that. Maybe we throw in a calculation about how to figure out the elasticities. We look at the slope and, or we look at the arc elasticity formula or something like that to calculate the elasticity it itself. What we want to do here though is we want to talk about elasticity uh, initially here in the context of how do you calculate it based upon uh, a, a formula. Um, so first of all, let's start with the basics. Again, elasticity of demand is equal to the change in quantity divided by a given quantity and divide that by a change in price over the price. So we match this quantity and this price up and we look at the change in quantity and the change in price that result. Now, we can rewrite that equation to say this, the elasticity of demand is equal to the price over the quantity multiplied by the change in quantity over the change in price. This is important for a really straightforward, math, straightforward mathematical reason. This particular part of our equation now is simply the slope of a line. It's the slope of the line. So if we have a linear demand curve and we can determine the slope, well, we can drop that slope right in here, multiply it times the price over the quantity, and we can figure out the elasticity. So our sort of normal uh, line looks something like this. Just our slope-intercept form, where we have the quantity is equal to A minus B times P. The slope here, of course, is negative B. We put that right in here. So our elasticity of demand is equal to P over Q times B, or the slope of the line. Now, sorry, negative B. That's the slope of the line. So now, great. It's a simple way of calculating elasticity. If we have a linear demand curve and we're given data and we know what the price and the quantity are at any given point and we know the slope of the line, we can drop all that information in to figure out the elasticity of demand. And that leads us to another part of the elasticity. We know that on a demand curve there are prices and quantities that correspond to each other. The slope is constant, but the price and quantity are always changing along that line. Which means that the elasticity of demand has to always change along the line. If we have a price of 10 and a quantity of 1, and then we go to a price of, say, 8 and a quantity of 4, well, this whole thing is going to change. And that means that if we look at a demand curve, the elasticity along that curve is also going to be continually changing. Here's our normal looking demand curve. It doesn't look like it's going to hurt anybody. It's just a basic demand curve. But let's say, let's say we're at a point where the price is equal to zero. We're down here. We're at this point right here where we cross the x-axis. If we drop a zero in here for price, well, this whole thing becomes zero. We put a zero in for price, our elasticity equation becomes zero. So at this point, elasticity is equal to zero. Now, let's say we put a zero here where the quantity is equal to zero. In other words, where we run into our intercept. 
Well, if zero is the quantity, and we put a zero in for here, mathematically what we're saying is that the elasticity of demand is equal to infinity. Same demand curve, but the elasticity is very, very different. And anywhere along this line, we're going to have very, uh, values that go between zero and infinity. There's one point along this line, though, that sort of demarcates the segments of the line. It sort of sets this line into territories. It's the line in the sand, if you will. And that's this point right here. This is the midpoint of the demand curve. And at that midpoint, we see that the elasticity of demand is equal to negative 1. Take the absolute value of it if that makes you comfortable. That's called the unitary elastic point. And any point on the demand curve above that, or if you want to think of it this way, to the left of this value of Q, is going to have a value or an elasticity of demand that's greater than the absolute value of negative 1. Which means that any point to the left of this value, any quantity price combination to the left of this, is elastic. If you're to the right of that point, then what we have is that the elasticity of demand is less than the absolute value of negative 1, which makes that portion of the demand curve inelastic. So when we're on a demand curve and we're looking at elasticity, a linear demand curve has a constant slope but not constant elasticity. That's something we don't really get into in principles all that often. Slope is not elasticity. Elasticity tells us the percentage change of one value in terms of another. And we have a point in the middle, the unitary elastic point, that divides that demand curve into two different segments. Now you have an equation that can help you find the elasticity of demand if you have a price and quantity combination and you know the slope of the line. 